You can draw this in Procreate. This is the perfect beginner tutorial for Procreate to learn all about the basic features in the app. But of course, this is also a very relaxing project if you are already familiar with Procreate. I will guide you through all the steps while you will learn about alpha lock, layer clipping mask, using layer blending modes, and more. So do be sure to share it on social media. If you're sharing it on Instagram, then tag me in the image, not just in the description, because that way I will be able to find your work and then maybe we will see it in the next video. Like these fantastic results from my friends at Patreon. If you are starting to develop a serious Procreate tutorial addiction, then that's the place you need to go. I have more than 100 Procreate tutorials to keep you satisfied, but of course it's also a great way to support this channel. For this tutorial, we are working on a canvas that is 3500 pixels by 3500 pixels, but if your iPad can't handle a lot of layers, then I would suggest making your canvas a little bit smaller and making the brush sizes a little bit smaller as well. I have links the color palette we'll be using in the description as always, so if you are ready, let's get Get started. We'll start off by creating a gradient for our background. So let's grab this color first, first color in the first row and drag it onto our canvas. Then we'll switch and grab this color, second color in the first row. And for our brush, we will go to the airbrushing brushes and use the soft brush. The opacity of the brush, well, let's set that to 100%. And let's set the size to 20%. And we'll start at the bottom and add that nice blue there. And then I'll press lightly as I move up to the halfway point of our canvas. So a bit like this, then we'll go to the magic wand here at the top. We'll tap Gaussian blur, and then either with your pen or your finger, slide to the right on your screen to create a soft gradient. I'll set it to 58% and then just tap the magic wand again. Next, we are going to add a circle, a circle for our landscape. Let's create a new layer for that. So we'll go to the layer menu, then tap the plus. And then for our brush, we will go to the calligraphy brushes and use the monoline brush. And then for the color, we will grab this one over here, third color in the first row. The opacity of the brush should be at 100% and the size doesn't really matter. I have it set to 5% and then draw a circle, hold your pen in place and then hold one finger on the screen to make it snap to a perfectly round circle, something like this, and then drag in the color to fill your shape. Now let's make sure that it's in the center. Let's go to the arrow up here, the move and transform tool. And here at the bottom, under snapping, turn on snapping and then move your circle around until you see two lines, two orange lines, vertical and horizontal. And then you'll know that your circle is in the center of your canvas. Then tap the arrow again to get out of here. And now let's create a gradient on our circle as well. But to make sure that we won't be painting outside of this shape, outside of this circle, we'll go to the layer with the circle. And right now, the circle is the only thing on this layer. Now tap that and then tap alpha lock. Then we can go back and grab that, that soft brush under airbrushing. And for the color, we will grab the fourth color in the first row. And then we'll go over the center right here and add some orange. And then to make the gradient even softer, we can go to the magic wand again, tap Gaussian blur and slide to the right to let's say 42% and then tap the magic wand again. Now we will create a new layer on top of our circle. We'll tap the plus and our landscape that will be inside the circle. We don't want that landscape to, to move outside of the circle. We want everything to stay inside. So for this layer, we will turn on clipping mask. Now, whatever we draw here, it'll only show up on the circle. Now for the brush, we will go back to the calligraphy brushes. And now let's grab the script brush. It's a bit like the monoline brush, but for this brush, the harder you press, the thicker your line will become. The opacity should be at 100% and let's set the size to 10%. And for the color, 
we will grab this, this first color in the second row. And now we will start about here. We are going to make two mountains. We'll make a wobbly line going up and then we'll go back down. And then over here, we will go back up again and back down with a wobbly shape. And then we'll loop around to close the shape. And then you can drag in the color to fill it. And we'll make another shape underneath this one. So first we'll tap layer two, then we'll tap the plus. And for the color, we will go to the next one, the second color in the second row. And then we'll make another mountain shape. We'll start about here, make a jagged shape. Over here, we will go up and then loop around to close it. And then you can drag in the color. Now let's make another one. Let's go and create one on top of this one. So we'll tab the plus. Now this one isn't automatically clipped. This one was because it's in between these two layers. So for this one, we need to tap clipping mask again. And for the color, we will grab this one, third color in the second row. And we will start about here and we'll make a jagged line going up here and then back down, loop around, close the shape and drag in the color. Now let's go back to the layer menu, tap the plus again and again, set this layer to clipping mask. And then for the color, we will grab this one, fifth color in the second row. And we will make a bit of a hilly shape, a bit bumpy. We'll start about here. It's a bit more straight than the shape we just created. Loop around and close it. Then drag in the color. And then let's make some shapes in between this foreground shape and the mountain. So tap this one then tap the plus. It'll be automatically clipped. And then for the color, let's grab this one. Second color in the second row. And we'll just vary the colors a bit, make a few of these hilly shapes. Loop around, close it, drag in the color. Then another one, we'll do that underneath this one. So we'll tap this layer, then tap the plus. And then for the color, we will grab this one, fourth color in the second row. And we'll make one that's a bit higher, like this. Loop around, close the shape and drag in the color. Then another one underneath this one. So first we'll tap layer five here, then tap the plus. Then for the color, we will grab this one. First color in the second row. And then we will make another one a bit higher. Loop around, close the shape and drag in the color. Then again, a layer underneath this one. So first tap layer five, then tap the plus, And then for the color, we'll grab this one again. Fourth color in the second row. And we'll go up here and back down, loop around, close the shape and drag in the color. Now let's go for one more shape in the foreground. Let's go to the top layer six here, tap the plus for a new layer. And again, set this to clipping mask. And now for the color, we will grab this one. Third color in the second row. And we'll make a pretty straight line like this. And we'll move downward a little bit here, loop around and close the shape and then drag in the color. Next, we are going to add some depth and some gradients to these, to these planes. Let's start with this one. Layer six here, let's turn on alpha lock by tapping the layer and then turning on alpha lock. And then let's grab the soft brush again. Let's go to airbrushing, grab the soft brush. And for the color, let's grab this one. Second color in the first row. Let's lower the opacity to 60%. And then let's go over this underside just slightly to add a little bit of a gradient. Now let's move on to this layer, layer eight. Let's tap it, turn on alpha lock. 
I'll choose the same color over here to create a bit of a gradient here as well. Then we'll move to this layer, layer nine. Again, let's tap it, turn on alpha lock. And this time let's, let's add a different color. Let's grab this one, the sixth color in the first row. And let's add a little bit of this yellow here. Then we'll move on to layer 10. Again, turn on alpha lock. And for the color, let's grab this one again. Second color in the first row for a little bit of a dark gradient there. Then let's move to the foreground, layer 11. Let's turn on alpha lock here as well. And let's first grab this color over here, the eight color in the first row. And let's go over the top area. And you see my brush is outside of the shape. I just want a little bit of that blue, little edge. And then I'd like to add more effects to this layer. First, let's grab a different color. We'll grab this one over here, fifth color in the second row. And now we are going to make use of the selection tool. That's the S shape ribbon here at the top. We'll set it to freehand with color fill turned off. So make sure that this isn't blue. And now we will make a shape. We'll start here and make a wavy line like this, loop around and then close the selection by tapping this little circle. And now while you have a selection, you can only paint inside of that selection. So let's grab the brush and then go over the top here to add a little gradient there. And then when we turn off the selection by tapping the S shape ribbon, you can see that you have a little gradient, but it has this crisp top here. Now let's do this again. Let's grab the S shape ribbon again, make another shape here, loop around, close the selection, then grab the brush. And let's also grab this blue again, that eight color in the first row and add a little bit of that here to the top for a nice little gradient and then tap the S shape ribbon again. Next, let's create some effects for our mountains. So let's go to our mountain layers. Let's start with the one in the middle. That's layer three. And for this one, I want to work with layer blending modes. If we put a layer on top of this and set the layer blending mode to multiply, we can use the color that the mountain already has and still it will become darker because multiply it kind of like multiplies the colors and makes them darker. So we will create a new layer on top by tapping the plus and it will tap the end to change the layer blending mode and we'll scroll up to multiply. But right now this layer, it's not clipped to that mountain, but it's clipped to the circle. So when we paint on here, the paint will also show up on the sky. Now to fix that, we can make use of the selection tool again. So let's tap this layer with the mountain and then you select. So it automatically selects everything that's on that layer. And then we can go back to that new layer. And now on this layer, we will only be painting on the area that is selected. So let's grab a different brush. Let's go to the calligraphy brushes, use the script brush again. And then for the color, let's grab, let's just grab the color that the mountain already has. First color, second row. And then let's create a zigzaggy line downward like this, loop around, drag in the color, add a little bit over here. You know what? I actually think it would look nice if it's a bit more bluish. So what we could actually do is grab this color, for instance, fifth color in the second row and just drag it onto the shape. And let's also create a shape over here, a wiggly line downward, loop around, drag in the color and add a few more. Maybe a shape over here. And now we can play around with the opacity. You can do so by tapping the M and sliding to the left. If you want the effect to be a bit less dark, like 70%. And I actually want to check what it looks like 
if we use this color, the eight color in the first row. I think it'll be a bit more bluish. I like that even more, but of course you can play around with the colors. I want to add even more dark blue. So let's create another multiply layer. We'll tap the plus and then we'll tap the N again and scroll up to multiply. And then again, with this script brush, we're going to add more shapes Go over here, a wiggly shape, drag in the color, perhaps some over here along that edge, drag in the color, a little bit over here, drag in the color. And then maybe let's also use that, that soft brush to create a little bit of a dark gradient. This way with the multiple layers, we can play around with the color and with the effects and still have control because you can always just remove the layers or change them. So right now they look like this. Now let's turn off the selection tool so we can See it clearly. Then we can play around with the opacity again by tapping the M, using the sliders. I think 75 looks good. And then once you're happy with the effect, you can actually pinch these layers together. So the base mountain layer with the two multiply layers. Pinch them like this, and then let's move on to the mountain in the back. Again, let's tap the plus, and then tap the N on the new layer and set it to multiply. And then we'll do the same thing. First, we need to go to this layer, tap it, then you select. Then we can go back to this multiply layer and we can grab the calligraphy brush, the script brush. Now let's use the same blue color or whatever color you like to create a zigzaggy line. You can create whatever pattern you like, of course. Let's drag in the color. I'll go for something like this. Then over here. Drag in the color. And I think we can keep these relatively simple. Let's just add a little bit of a gradient by going to the airbrushing brushes. And then going over that bottom area a little bit. Then we can tap the S shape ribbon to turn off the selection and let's lower the opacity just a little bit by tapping the M and sliding to the left. And then if you're happy, you can pinch these together. Then let's go to this one. Let's first tap this layer, you select, then go back to the layer menu, tap the plus for a new layer and let's set this to multiply as well. So tap the N, scroll up to multiply, and then for the brush, let's go back to the calligraphy brushes. And for the color, let's grab this one now, the second color in the first row. And then let's start at the top here and make a zigzaggy line like this, loop around, close the shape, drag in the color. Let's also add a little bit over here. Now let's lower the opacity. Let's tap the M, slide to the left. We'll set it to 50. Then let's make another layer, another multiply layer. So we'll tap the plus and tap the N, slide to multiply. And then let's grab that other blue again. Let's grab the eight color in the first row. Now let's make another shape. Let's start at the top, wiggly shape down, loop around, close the shape and drag in the color. Now let's also grab the soft brush again under airbrushing and add that gradient here at the bottom and then lower the opacity a little bit. So tab the M and slide to the left. Let's set it to 60%. And you can also add some light effects here. We can tab the plus for a new layer and instead of setting it to multiply, you can tab the N and set it to screen. That's a great layer blending mode if you want to add some light. 
And for the color, let's grab this one, first color in the second row. And let's just go over the top here just a little bit for a slight light effect. And then tap the S shape ribbon to get out of that, that selection menu. And now we have some nice mountains. Of course, you can tap the S and play around with the opacity, set it to 80%, for instance. And then once you're happy, you can pinch these together. Now let's add some extra shapes to our scene. First, let's tap the plus right here to make a layer in between this mountain and the hills. So let's tap the plus. Then for our brush, we will go to the calligraphy brushes and use the model line brush again. And for the color, we will grab this one over here, the seventh color in the first row. And we are going to add some circles over here. Hold your pen in place, tap one finger on the screen and one over here as well, a smaller one. And you can tap circle here at the top if you want to move it around. I'll place it about here. And then you can drag in the color to fill these two shapes. I want to add another one and that will be on top of this layer, layer seven, let's tap the plus and now let's create another circle over here. Hold your pen in place, tap one finger on the screen, and then drag in the color. Then for these layers, let's start with this one. Let's turn on alpha lock, and then let's grab a pink color. Let's grab this one over here, sixth color in the second row. And for the brush, we will go back to the airbrushing brushes and use the soft brush. And now let's go over at the bottom area and add this pink to orange gradient. Let's do the same for this one. So let's go to layer 13, tap it, turn on alpha lock, and then let's go there and add that gradient here as well. Now let's create some more shapes. Let's go to this layer, layer 10, let's tap the plus. And for the brush, we will go to the calligraphy brushes, use the monoline brush, and for the color, we will grab this one, third color in the first row. And let's add some random oval shapes with various sizes like this. Then drag in the color. Here at the top, you can use continue filling and tap these areas to fill those as well. Then we'll go to the layer, tap it, turn on alpha lock. Then we will go back to the airbrushing brushes and use the soft brush. And for the color, we will grab this one. That's the seventh color in the second row. And we will add a little bit of a gradient here as well at the bottom. And then for another shape, let's go to this layer, layer six. Let's tap the plus for the color. Let's grab this one, fifth color in the first row. And for the brush, let's go to the calligraphy brushes again and use the script brush. And then let's create a rock-like shape here. Something like this. Loop around to close it, drag in a color. And then let's go to the layer and turn on alpha lock here. So we'll tap it, turn on alpha lock. And then for the color, we will go and grab this one, fourth color in the first row. Now let's add a little bit of orange here and let's color this in by hand. So you will get something like this. All right, next let's add a sun or a moon to our scene. Let's make a layer on top of all the others. So tap the top one and tap the plus and then let's grab this color over here. That's the ninth color in the first row for the brush. Let's grab the monoline brush and then let's draw a circle over here. Hold your pen in place, tap one finger on the screen and then drag in the color to fill your shape. Then let's create some, some clouds. Let's tap the plus for a new layer and let's make the brush a little bit bigger. Let's set it to 65%. Now let's make a horizontal line here. Tap one finger on the screen to make sure that it's perfectly horizontal. Then let's zoom in and create a very simple cloud-like shape. 
and drag in the color. Let's do the same over here. Let's make a line like this. Hold your pen in place. Tab one finger on the screen. Let's make another one underneath. And then add a very simple shape. Drag in the color. Let's also make a different colored cloud. Let's grab this color, fifth color in the first row. Let's make one over here. First a line like this. Let's make another one on top. And then a simple shape. Drag in the color. And then to play around with the opacity a little bit, what you can do is add a layer mask to this layer. You can tap the layer, then tap mask, and you'll have this white layer mask attached to your layer. And when you paint on that with black, by using the soft brush and the color set to black, you can block parts of this layer. And you can make these clouds a little bit transparent right where you want them to be. So we'll just add a little bit of transparency, not too much, and make them fade with the background. Now for some extra touches. Let's add some plants to our foreground. Let's first make a new layer. Let's tap the plus. By the way, if you're happy with your landscape inside of the circle, you can actually merge all those layers. Or if you feel uncertain about that, then duplicate your layers first or duplicate your entire project. Now on this layer, let's grab the calligraphy brushes again and use the script brush. Then for the color, let's grab this one first color in the second row. And let's grab the selection tool, the S shape ribbon, set it to rectangle. And then over here, we'll make a rectangular selection like this. Then we'll grab the brush again and we'll make a shape, a little hilly shape like this. And by using the selection tool, we will make sure that the bottom part is nice and horizontal. Let's do something similar on the other side. Let's tap the S shape ribbon again and then again and make a selection over here. Then grab the brush again and make another shape. Drag in the color and then tap the S shape ribbon again. Then let's turn on alpha lock on this layer by tapping the layer, turning on alpha lock. Now for the color, let's grab this purple seventh color in the second row. And for the brush, let's grab the soft brush again. Then I'll make a little purple gradient over here. Now let's do something slightly different there. Let's grab this color, for instance, fourth color in the second row. And let's add that on this side. Then we'll make a new layer underneath this one. So first we'll tap this layer, then we'll tap the plus. Then we'll grab the script brush under calligraphy again. And for the color, let's grab this one over here. That's the sixth color in the first row. Let's zoom in a little bit and let's make a simple plant. First, we'll make a line upward then a leaf at the top. And then we'll make these leaves, these very simple oval shaped leaves on the side. A big one over here and a big one here. Then you can drag in a color and use continue filling at the top and tap in these areas to fill them. Then grab the brush again. You might need to adjust little parts where you have little gaps. And then let's make another plant. This one is a little bit curved like this. And then with these simple leaves again. Make them bigger as you move down. Then drag in the color, use continue filling, and tap in these areas. Then let's go to the layer, tap the layer, and turn on alpha lock. And then let's create a gradient here as well. Let's grab the soft brush, 
under airbrushing. And for the color, let's grab this pink, sixth color in the second row. And then let's go over the underside and a little bit over the side, creating that nice gradient. Then let's also grab the purple, seventh color in the second row. And then let's go over the bottom area to complete the gradient. Then for some final touches to our scene, let's create a new layer. We can pinch these together. Actually, these look great. Let's pinch them and then tap the plus for a new layer. And then for the color, let's grab this one, second color in the second row. And for the brush, we will grab the monoline brush again. And let's also make the brush smaller. Let's set it to 30%. And over here, I'd like to add a few extra circles. We'll vary them in size. We're just going to add some extra interest to our scene. Let's drag in a color. Then let's also grab this orange fourth color in the first row. And let's add some more. One over here, one over here. Drag in a color. And then to add some shading to these, we can make a new layer on top of this by tapping the plus and then setting this to clipping mask and tapping the N and setting it to multiply. Then we'll grab the soft brush again under airbrushing. Let's make it a bit smaller. Let's set it to perhaps 5%. And now with this orange, we can just go over this lower area and here as well, make a rounded motion to add a little bit of shadow. We can do the same for these. You can grab this color by tapping and holding and then go over that lower area with a rounded motion to add a little bit of shadow. You can do the same for the highlights. You can just add a new layer on top by tapping the plus, setting that to clipping mask and then tapping the N, setting the layer blending mode to screen. Now with the same color, we can go over there and it'll add some light. Same goes for the orange. You can grab the color by tapping and holding and adding a little bit of highlight. And I want you happy with these you can pinch these together. Now I want to add something of like a motion effect around our circle. Let's tap the plus for a new layer and let's drag this layer underneath the others right over here. No, not right over there, right on top of our background, of course, otherwise we won't be seeing it. And now for the color, let's grab this one. That's the 10th color in the first row. And then let's go to the calligraphy brushes again and use the monoline brush. And now we are going to make some circles. Let's draw like this. Hold your pen in place. Tap one finger on the screen. And then you circle here at the top to move it around. I want it to be about here. Then let's make another one. So tap the brush. Draw a circle. Hold your pen in place, tap one finger on the screen. And if you need to, you can move it around. I think they are placed nicely like this. Now let's go to the magic wand and use the motion blur. And then you can move your pen on the screen and decide the direction of the blur and the strength. I'll go for something like this. Then we can play around with the mask again. We can go to the layer, tap it, and turn on mask. So we have a mask. And then we can grab the soft brush again under airbrushing. And then let's, let's remove some parts. Let's make the brush a little bit bigger. 15%. Let's turn up the opacity to 85. And let's just block some parts. So we only have these, these moving stripes in a few areas. So try to get something like this. 
Then we'll make one final layer on top of all the others. So let's go to the top, let's tap the plus, then let's tap the N and set this to screen. Then for the brush, we will go to the calligraphy brushes again and use the script brush. And for the color, we will grab this one. Ninth color in the first row. And let's just add some twinkles with various sizes. Now the harder you press, the bigger your circle, your little dot will become. We'll make tiny little groups of these sparkles. We'll also add them outside of our circle. They give a sparkly little magical touch. And don't worry if your landscape doesn't look exactly like mine, each one will be unique. And you can play around with colors, with shapes, and really create your own unique piece. Maybe some fine little spackles here. And there you have your colorful stylized landscape. I hope you've enjoyed following this tutorial. If you want to turn this into a streak and create another landscape, then you might like this tutorial next. I would like to thank you for watching and I will see you next time for the next tutorial.